While you're doing that, you may be hearing some music in the background. The music you're hearing is from an, from an album entitled Fresh Air One by a group called Mannheim Steamroller. The title of this track is Sonata. Well, this section, Roman numeral two, is a review from Wednesday's lesson, the derivative with respect to x of a constant. The formula that we learned on Wednesday does apply here. You could think of it as, the answer is zero, and you, you could think of it graphically. I mean, a function in the form f of x equals a constant would be, have a graph that's a horizontal line, and since horizontal lines have slope zero, it would make sense that the answer would be zero. However, you could think of this as the derivative with respect to x of c times x to the zero, because c is the same thing as c times x to the zero. And then using the derivative rule that um, I believe it was, let's see, who came up with this? It was Aaron Cohen came up with it in one class, and Emily Sandscrand came up with it in my fifth period class. You could take the exponent on x to the zero, take zero times c times x to the negative one. Well, zero times c is zero, so either way, it comes out to zero, whether you use the formula or whether you just think graphically, slope of a tangent line is zero if the uh, tangent line is drawn to a horizontal line. So, anyway, that was that one. And the derivative with respect to x of c times x, which has an invisible exponent of one on it, c times x to the 1. Make this a little bit bigger. Make sure you can see this on camera. All right. Derivative with respect to x of c times x to the 1. Now, you could take the exponent, bring it down, multiply it by the coefficient to get 1 times c times x to the 1 minus 1, which is 0, which is c. So that's using an algebraic approach. But keep in mind, you could also just think of this graphically. Think of a function which is linear and has a slope of c. f of x equals cx. The slope of the tangent line would have to be c. So if you think of it graphically, you get c. Or if you use the algebraic formula we derived and proved on Wednesday, you would get c for the answer. That one is c. Now, these other two. This is uh, straight out of Wednesday's lesson. It's n times x to the n minus 1. Assuming that n is, what kind of number is n? Up in the header, it says, uh, is n defined? Hmm. A little alarming. And there it is. n, n, no variables. There it is. n, p, and something else are rational constants. So, that's uh, good enough. All right. And then over here, this is straight out of Wednesday's lesson also, just review. We have n times c times x to the n minus 1. So that was a review section. Roman numeral 2. So, Fresh Air by Mannheim Steamroller. All right. Now, let's see what's going on down here. Optional today required for test. So join me on page two, please. <coughs> and uh, take a look at problem one. The directions read find f prime of x and f prime of c. So find a, a function that produces slopes of tangent lines drawn to the graph of f at x comma f of x. Well, the reason this problem is in today's lesson is because the function is a product. We could think of this as first u times v. We could think of x plus 3 as second. So we have the derivative, or we want to find the derivative of first times second. Well, the uh, the micro-narrative that guides us through this problem is derivative of first times the second plus first times the derivative of the second. So, 
following the micro narrative, I'm going to switch over to blue. As you're writing down the derivative, let the following words guide you. Derivative of the first times the second plus first times the derivative of the second. So, there's really going to be four parts. And so I recommend that you set up a four-part skeleton for this problem. This is the structure of the answer. Derivative of the first times the second plus first times the derivative of the second. So as you're going through here, you write <coughs> the derivative of the first is negative 10x to the negative 3. That's the derivative of the first. Times the second, which is just x plus 3. Derivative of the first times the second plus first, which is 5x to the negative 2, times the derivative of the second. Well, the second is a binomial, and it's a sum. So the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivative. So take the derivative of each term individually. The derivative of x is just plain 1. The derivative of 3 is 0. Add them up. And there we have the answer for the product rule. Derivative of the first times the second plus first times the derivative of the second. Let's not take time in class to simplify that or whatever. I mean, I know you know algebra. The second part of the direction is where to find f prime of c. And in this case, c is equal to 1. So to complete part 2 of the problem, you would have to find f prime of 1. The slope of the tangent line when x equals 1 would be negative 10 times 1 to the negative 3, which is 1, times 1 plus 3, which is 4. Plus, now plug 1 in for these x's, you get 5 times, that's going to be 5, times 1. Well, do you have any questions on problem 1? If you do, just take a moment to ask one of your fellow group members. They might be able to help you out. And uh, let's go on to number 2. Now, I'd like you to attempt problem number two on your own. Here's f of x. It's, oh, look at that. Look at that. It has an e to the x. And set up the skeleton for the product rule. And this is going to be a four-part skeleton. Try it on your own. Try to find f prime of x in number two. Well, here's what I hope you came up with. Allow your choices to be guided by the micro-narrative derivative of the first times the second plus first times the derivative plus first times the derivative of the second. Here we go. Derivative of the first is 3x squared minus 3. Times the second, that means just copy down the second factor. 2x squared plus 3x plus 5e to the x. Derivative of the first times the second plus first is x cubed minus 3x times the derivative of the second. Raise your hand if you can tell me what the uh, derivative of the second factor is. Um, yeah, you know what? Go ahead. Someone decide who it's going to be that's going to call it out. You call it out. I'll write it down. Okay? Ready? Go. Yeah? Uh, yeah. You got it. Yeah, it's 4x plus 3 plus 5e to the x. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The constant just comes out front. It tags along. So you could simplify that. We could evaluate it at c. But let's just go on. For the sake of time, 